a friend of mine told me that there is no need for software architecture and it is a theoretical concept actually this showed me a lot if you wonder why we need software architecture or you want to know the difference between coding design and software architecture then this video is for you keep watching Hi everybody, it is Mustafa Jamal in my first episode of Expertise in Programming and I'm going to today to talk about why we need software architecture because it's a common question that I have heard a lot while providing consultation software architecture and delivering software architecture courses. Okay, so why do we need software architecture? Actually, we have three uh, main different concepts. We have the concept of writing, code, we have a concept of design and we have a concept of architecture. There is something common between all of them. What do you think this thing is common? And why I'm differentiating between them? Actually, I'm making this difference to uh, clarify the difference and this will lead us to understand the need for software architecture because it has a set of concerns that out of concern for uh, of our concern while writing code and it's out of our concern while making design. Actually, writing code design and architecture, they all are designed but what makes them different as we, uh, as follow let's have a look at this coding example we need to create a simple sum function that sum numbers from 1 to 10 we can uh, create a for loop that uh, uh, count 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 until 10 and we can use recursion and those who are familiar with recursion will understand this line of code how we can employ it in a recursion function and we have another solution that we can use uh, this simple equation which is more efficient and the best performance so you have different designs to solve this problem and we are used to uh, coding problems we have many coding problems that related to trees dealing with sorting or whatever and each of them is a different design that uh, are performed to achieve a certain goal solving a certain coding problem okay making a certain function to happen and these are the coding problems okay so we have set of concerns here we, while you are writing code you want to have a clean code uh, you want to um, you want to make it a self descriptive code uh, naming convention set of concerns related to writing while when we design we have a, a different set of concerns now you have a set of functions in a certain class and this class will be provided to someone to use it uh, so there is some design concepts here you may want to abstract the access to database so you may use a proxy pattern and this proxy uh, abstract the access to the database you may use proxy pattern uh, to um, uh, to abstract an access to a, a, an external service whatever okay so we have design patterns and usually the design patterns has a problem statement a body that solves this uh, problem and a class diagram like the one we see here and not a class diagram a class diagram so design actually is about interaction between different classes and how we organize this interaction it's about solid principle each class has a single responsibility we may use uh, a, a, a segregation uh, the other interface segregation principle or whatever uh, less of principle so uh, while we making a design we are uh, concerned about how the classes will interact with each other how we are going to reuse a certain functionality inheritance and so on so we will find ourselves in a certain environment using a certain language like java c++ php python c sharp or whatever okay and all of these concerns are around us so while we are designing we are in the same environment we are using certain platform we may use a certain framework that implements a set of patterns for us and all of these patterns run in the cert in the same environment in this and when it run it will run in the same memory okay so that's what actually is design about but when we separate this system into a set of components that are interacting with each other over the internet or whatever we are talking about software architecture about a whole solution so if we looked at software architecture patterns you will found different concerns here look at these patterns called competing consumer pattern 
And this competing consumer pattern, you have uh, many services that throw a lot of requests, and you and have a certain service that uh, provide uh, some sort of service for these consumers. So you want to scale this service in isolation of the requesters, those the uh, consumers and their consumers. So to make this scaling, you are going to use a queue in between. This queue can be implemented using a RabbitMQ. It can be a Microsoft queue. It can be a Java queue. It can be whatever queue. The service itself is implemented using a different language than what RabbitMQ is created with or the queue. Uh, the consumers are different systems that are trying to consume our services. We are talking about distributed system. We are talking about different components that are interacting with each other. All of these components can be in the same environment or can be distributed over the network or distributed over the internet. So we have different concerns here. And let's go in more depth about what is software architecture is and the concerns that it is about. Look at these three different software architecture uh, examples. Sorry, several architecture examples. Software architecture tells what the system is about. When you look at the first, uh, uh, the first uh, image uh, on the left, you can say it's about an office, and the one in the middle you can say it's a home, and the third one on the right you may say it's a school or some sort of a mall or whatever. Okay, so you can have the sense what this system is about. And when you uh, when you look at let me jump to here when you look at this you have the sense that this what this system is about it's about mobile applications that are act with a database okay so software architecture is about the fairest pin in your design let me give you an example i want you to you to create an application uh, that consumes uh, uh, that will be used by our salesmen so salesmen are moving okay that are going to be used by salesmen uh, in a real estate system so they can interact with customer and get information from our database about leads properties we have mortgages and whatever and this uh, set of data we have in our system are you going when, when I provide this problem to you are you going to think about uh, that we are going to use a repository pattern or a proxy pattern of course not the first thing that will came to your mind that you are going to think that uh, we may use a mobile app that is Android and we are going to communicate over a wrist uh, because there is no need to have web sockets here and the data will be on a database and we are going to use a service layer that abstract the database or that access at the server side so that's what came in your mind and these patterns uh, that you think about is an architecture pattern Okay, so to draw this, you are drawing an architecture. So, software architecture here about the significant decisions because when you made a decision that you are going to use RESTful web services, why you made this decision? Because uh, you don't need to uh, inst instantly uh, feel any change at the server side. Well, if, uh, if I'm going to tell you that you have a mobile app that will be used by a technician, to monitor a set of sensors in a factory you are going to directly think about uh, web sockets and uh, reactive uh, architecture okay so it's a different decision and it's significant over the whole system because if you decided to change from rest to web sockets or a uh, reactive architecture you are going to uh, this decision will make a, a huge impact on the system okay and also you not see that you are defining these components that are going to interact with each other in the other graph that is uh, in the other graph on the right it's about system with different components and it's a real architecture for a system actually uh, that has general ledger hr uh, sales technical but it's uh, i made it that way because it's for one of uh, uh, my customers so it's not good to <laughs> show you the real components but it gives you the sense about having these components and structural elements and the interfaces uh, between them so it's about the behavior of collaboration among these elements how they are going to collaborate uh, either change in a certain place will affect directly in another place are going to collaborate directly or uh, through a certain uh, assist uh, service path uh, look at uh, at the left we have an open id connect way of collaboration 
uh, to uh, make a certain authentication for uh, someone and on the right we have a service bus that organizes collaboration between different system uh, services and applications okay so and this collaboration will help you define how to organize this collaboration to compose a larger system it's a different concerns completely about how when we talk about design patterns and components and so on okay also software architecture is about the architectural style that guides this organization are you going to create a monolithic application uh, a huge application uh, that everyone is using or you will divide this system into a set of services using service oriented architecture or a small services that are going to collaborate to compose it to a very small system uh, services that are going to collaborate to uh, provide the whole solution okay it's a style it's a architecture style it's not a pattern actually because when i tell you about uh, i'm going to use microservices actually it's not a pattern because there's no certain problem that these microservices were, are going to solve but it's a style in how i'm going to solve my problem okay the same problem can use can be solved in monolithic application or microservices application okay so it's a style it's a how you are going to solve your problem while the pattern is about a certain problem and how to solve it okay Also, structure it's about quality attributes, and this ISO quality attributes. It's about security. It's about how we are going. It's we call quality attributes actually a cross-cutting uh, concerns also. It's about reliability. It's cross-cutting concern over the whole system. It's about uh, st uh, sustainability, performance, uh, usability, and this elitist family. Okay, this all a concern for software architecture. Okay, and usually in design we are not concerned about all of these things very much okay of course performance is cost cutting concern and we it, it affect my uh, design at the design level and at the coding level however it's also a concern in software architecture are you going to use a set of services uh, divide your system into, into functions uh, and these functions will be hosted in the services and these services are going to scale horizontally or the system as a whole will be one system that will going to scale vertically so it's a decision at architectural level all of these together all what i said already compose the definition of software architecture that you can find in msdn or you can find in sei or whatever place all of these together is the definition of software architecture thanks for keep watching if you like it like it down there and don't forget to subscribe see you in the future